Professor Stapp's track record in environmental education is impressive, as well as his Michigan University appointment. He's been director of UNESCO's International Environment Education Program. But in his lectures to teachers this week, he made it clear he's very much a realist. According to the professor, some of the best arguments for increased environmental protection have an economic base. As an example, I know some of the paper companies uh, have now found that what, what, is the, what is the glue that kind of holds the fiber together in paper is called lignin. Mm. And lignin used to go into the water causing the water pollution. Now we have found a way of reclaiming that lignin and get it back into the chemical industry and therefore the output of one uh, industry may be an input into another one. And another good way is the questions of health of the people. That through water pollution, through air pollution, through noise pollution, you may be lowering productivity. And if you can think in terms of improving the quality of the environment, involving people in making decisions, it may also increase the productivity, and therefore that's also good economics. by the Red Cross in conjunction with Maitland Hospital to honour residents in the area who had made countless blood donations over the years. Are increasing day by day. Shouldn't treat Dr. complicated Keller diseases such as leukemia in the various components so that they can be used aged uh, to 60. for Hospitals in the best ways for the treatment. Cannot function uh, without blood. Surgery or surgery Dr. Cease. Keller added that only 2% of, uh, of the eligible population able disease. to give blood Certainly. did so. Afterwards, it was time to present 138 donors from the area with so badges so. in appreciation for the lives they had not saved over the years. Back in Newcastle, it was the annual torchbearer presentation of Czech Slack at the Ferguson House. Twelve torchbearer groups from the Newcastle area presented the funds they had raised during the past year to Legacy President Mr. William Beasley. Legacy anticipates that once checks have come in from all country areas, to hopefully have raised in excess of $60,000 for continuing work and work in the Hunter region. Animated cartoons for the ABCs this day tonight and for Channel 9, Peter John Ellen, Peter Nichols. The W.G. Walkley Award for the best story in a provincial... But in the 26 years since the establishment of the Walkley Awards, these has been a flowering and, or well, there's been a flowering and diversification of journalism in Australia, which more than justifies Sir William Walkley's confidence in it. Australian detective wanted for armed robbery and rape. Colin Tyrus has done a lot in his 29 years. He began his radio journalism career with 3AW in Melbourne in the Seb Colin Tyrus. Two small daughters. He came to TVQ Channel O Brisbane as a general reporter in mid-78. TV News Report was jointly won by Paul Bongiorno, TVQ Channel O, for his report on the cover-up of faults in high-rise buildings.
Shane Dyson from TVQ Channel O received the award for Best Television News or Current Affairs Cine or Video Camera Work for a report on Cisco's progress in the Brisbane to Gladstone yacht race. Shane Dyson. The Drayton Consortium, which has CSR and Shell as its major shareholders, has sunk $150 million into the Drayton Open Cut for a so far nil return. Although the huge mine near Musselbrook is ready to go, Hunter Valley Mining Unions have placed it under a ban in the belief that this action will preserve employment at other less economic mines. The Drayton Company argues that the ban is preventing 180 men being employed now and that it's seriously undermining the confidence of overseas coal buyers. Where will those contracts go if they're lost to your mine? Will they strengthen the position of any other mine in the Hunter Valley? Uh, they won't strengthen the position of other mines in the Hunter Valley. Um, they, most of the coal will probably go to South Africa. It's uh, hard for us to say exactly where, but probably South Africa. But how are you going to win your argument? How are you going to convince the miners in the Hunter Valley that they should lift their ban? They believe that your mine might present a threat to their present employment, so it must seem appealing to them to sit back and do nothing about the ban. I can understand that attitude, but of course, uh, from the longer term point of view, it's quite incorrect. Um, Drayton, uh, what we're talking about at Drayton, is the long term share of the export steaming coal that uh, the Hunter Valley is going to get. And as such, it is a thing that is of concern to everyone in the Hunter Valley, and it's of concern to the miners themselves in the uh, uh, in the longer term, as far as the job security is concerned. <laughs> 